Greetings, comments. My name is Dragantles, and I'm making this video because I'm uh, quite annoyed. Because on Facebook, I keep seeing these, this the same post. It's, it's from a person, it's from a page called God's Answers Prayers. Yeah, God's Answers Prayers. They couldn't even spell answers properly. Um, and it's, 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 okay, this the same post from them always pops up in my in these Catholic groups. I try to refute it because it's so irritating people put it up because it's so wrong. But they just don't learn. I literally, I get very angry. The, the one the one thing that I get angry about is this really stupid post which people come into my group and they say why did the why did God how did Noah why did Noah build the ark in 40 days why did uh why did the people walk around Egypt or walk around the world so came out for 40 days why did why were there 40 this why are there 40 that why are there 40 days in this and then it goes off like 10 things 10 questions and he goes why do they say life starts at 40 why do they say a fool at 40 is a fool of error and why is the past mark in this in some African nation 40 he's like what is so special about 40 and, and I go there I'm like are you serious? And I refute every single one of them. And then I go to the, the, the non the non the non-religious ones, and I go, ask the people who made the test. What, okay, well, and then I then I explain the point about being full of forty and everything. And at the end, I'm like, can you please stop spreading these posts around Facebook? Is because I get irritated when dealing with these things because no no one. It's either me answering them or some guy calling them an idiot. I mean, even if they are an idiot, uh, it, it's nice for me to answer. But I'm just I'm just. It's irritating when you do these same posts, and I'm, I'm trying not to go into the whole Pharisee trap here, but you see these posts, and it's irritating because it's the same spam post, and I'm not an admin, so I can't remove, and moderate, so I can't remove those posts. It's quite irritating. And one of these posts is apparently a tour of the Holy Land, which uses the wrong images, and it's irritating because it's Protestant. It's definitely Protestant because it completely ignores everything Christian. Well, it's, or probably Christian ignores everything Catholic about it because Protestants don't like Catholics much because if, if we're right they're wrong obviously and if, if we're wrong they're right well actually no because they still have to argue over who's right within themselves but they use the wrong images and they completely disregard the Catholic presence in the in Jerusalem let me show you what I mean here so the first picture shows the place where Jesus is tried as far as I can tell mm, that's fine yeah it looks fine. The second image shows the well, you can see it. Like, you can clearly see these images. It shows a rock pillar sticking out of a wall, and it says Lot's wife. No, no, that is not Lot's wife. This is somewhere in Israel. Okay, this is somewhere in Israel. And as I told you before, one of my friends on Facebook is a, is a biblical archaeologist, and she's working the Tel Aman site, which is the location of biblical Sodom. That is in Jordan. Jordan. On the north northeast side of the Dead Sea. Jordan, not Israel. And clearly there it is a literally on it's like on a hill. It's it is a pillar, it is a pillar of salt that literally sticks out in the middle of the hill, a distance from the archaeology site. That is the biblical Sodom. That is Lot's wife. Not this. This is clearly it looks, it looks it looks like a wall that it's literally you could, if you could prop that piece of rock back up that would fit perfectly in line with the rest of the rock around it so unless there were a thousand people standing in the line and then then the lot's wife was leaning out when she looked back and they all turned to salt this is not lot's wife stop it okay the place where the body of jesus is laid after the crucifixion no it is not that location the actual location is in the church of the holy sepulcher okay the, okay the location is so then because that site is a pilgrimage site, okay? What happened was uh, when the Romans came along and destroyed Jerusalem, they saw the, pil the Christians are pilgrimaging there. So they filled the location with with rock and stuff, which actually which actually preserved it. This is just a prison cell. It's, it's a, okay? This is with, with a cross on it. This is fake. The actual location is in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It's effectively a flat stone surrounded by, not, it looks almost like, you know you know when you have like a four poster bed and you have the poles and like curtains at the top? It kind of looks like that, but instead of the bed, it's the, it's the stone where Jesus was on. That's where his body was laid after the crucifixion. Not this. This is a stone floor, not a table. He was laid on the table as, as, it, as custom because he, he had to fix his body as much as they could and clean him up for the crucifixion, after the crucifixion for the burial. Why would you put him on the floor? Okay, here, the burning bush. Hmm. A lot of questions about this. If this is the one, if this is what I think it is, which is a monastery, I think St. Catherine Monastery, somewhere in the Sinai Peninsula. Okay, the location of Mount Sinai is debated. 
Because if... Hmm. The Hebrews crossed the Red Sea, okay? They crossed the Red Sea. But if you look at Sinai Peninsula, it's like a dagger's tip, okay? Bet it's like a dagger's tip between Egypt on this side and the Middle East on this side. And so there's the bit of the Red Sea runs down there, a bit of the Red Sea runs down there, and then it joins up down, down to the Indian Ocean. Now, the, the, there's a lot of debate over, okay, what did the Hebrews actually cross? Did they cross this part of the Red Sea, this, that, the Red Sea, this part of the Red Sea, or this part of the Red Sea? Okay, we can cross out the, the bigger one here, because that would have taken days to cross. So it's either one this side or this side that they crossed. People had some sort of consensus then out that they um, that when they crossed over from Egypt, they went down from, Kosh, from Goshen, they crossed the small river, they went down to the Sinai Peninsula, and then they crossed, crossed the Gulf of Aqaba or something, in which, um, and then they can, and that's where the Red Sea crossing was into the Middle East. But something you remember here, after that they went to Mount Sinai. But the St. Catherine's Monastery is in the Sinai Peninsula. You may think, okay, well that's simple because it's near the Mount, Mount Sinai, not necessarily. The problem is that if Mount Sinai is in the Sinai Peninsula, then the Hebrews, right after going off, uh, right after um, escaping Pharaoh, would have to literally go all the way around the Dead Sea back to where they were so to get receive their laws. So whether or not that is the actual location of the biblical Mount Sinai is questionable, and so whether or not this is actually the burning bush is also questionable. The River Jordan. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, the, the River Jordan is not, it's not hard to it's not hard to skip. Well, it's not hard to it's hard it's not hard to miss. It's not hard to see. Okay, my language failed me. You can see it very clearly. Okay, it stretches from there to there. Obviously, that's the Sea of Galilee. That's the Dead Sea. Okay, Capernaum, this town of Jesus. Okay, yeah, again, quite hard to not, not quite hard to not see that. Bethesda. Okay, the um the birthplace of the Virgin Mary. On Sultan Suleiman Street. Hmm, I, I quite doubt that because I actually went on Google Maps to look and the Church of. Yeah, the Church of St. Anne, okay, which is in Jerusalem, is believed to be the location where the Blessed Virgin Mary was born and where they lived. That is on the wrong street. It's about a nine minute walk to get from that street to the Church of St. Anne. So I doubt that this was, this was like a nice church, but. This doesn't, this, even the doors, I'm looking at the doors, I'm looking at the pictures, and from what I can see, that is definitely not the location where she was born. Like, this is, this is the wrong church. Yeah, that's definitely the wrong church. I don't know what the, maybe they look at the back entrance, I don't know, I mean, it's clearly Christian iconography there, so maybe it's another church, but I doubt that's the same one. The Sea of Galilee, Tiberius, Israel. It, if, if you miss the Sea of Galilee, then... You really need to open your eyes because it, it's right there. Okay, it's, it's not hard to find. Golgotha, when was Jesus crucified? Stop it. Half the thing, half these, like a bunch of these pictures, like significant portion of them, are all in one location. Well, the actual location is all in one location. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The one that was buried by the Romans, okay? That one preserves all the features, most of the features concerning the Passion. Not only did it preserve the not only did it preserve the sepulchre where he was actually buried, it also preserved the stone where he was laid upon. But it also preserves the what's left of Mount Golgotha. Okay, you can even go to the exact spot where the cross stood, and it's directly it is an altar. Okay, in, in this little church, well, in this part, it, it's um, there's actually two. There's the Greek one and the Latin one. Hmm, and chapels. Yeah, I think the Greek one. Well, there's Roman ca there's Latin cavalry, cavalry and Greek cavalry. I really want to go to these places, okay? I would love to go. But in one of these, okay, there's, there's like a little altar, okay? And you can actually go underneath the altar, and then you'll see like this little icon of Jesus, okay? On the back of the altar there. With a whole, with, with circle in the ground of a colored stone. And that is where the cross stood. And just behind that altar, you can actually see the original, or what's left of, um, what's left of the rock of cavalry. This is not cavalry. It is not, okay? Literally, all that's left of this of the cavalry now is if you could if you could remove what the entire church's holy sepulchre and without disturbing in the stone, all that's left of cavalry now is effectively just this a finger of rock sticking up. That's all that's left now. This is wrong. Mount Sinai, where the Lord gave the Ten Commandments. Again, I doubt that this is Mount Sinai. I mean, even in this comments when I'm looking at the pictures, someone's already saying that no, it's actually in uh, it's in Tabuk, Saudi Arabia. Again, we don't actually know where Mount Sinai is. Okay, tradition traditions say many things, and we cannot be absolutely certain. I mean, again, we have to be careful uh, with 
because of the way the Red Sea crossing did place, take place again, we need to be careful. Did they, did they circle back to Mount Sinai or did they cross a different point in the Red Sea? Because again, until we get that sorted, we can't actually say where Mount Sinai is. Mount Hebron. I think that's accurate. I think that's accurate. Mount Hebron isn't that hard to find. The road to Jerusalem where Jesus traveled on the back of a donkey and, shout, and people shouted Hosanna. Okay, I can understand that. Hey, I think I can see the Dome of the Rock. Or I can see Temple Mount. And then I can also see the Western Wall. Cool picture. The one where Moses met Zipporah. I've got to take out a pinch of salt because I don't think there's, there's proper... Some of these wilds and the locations, are, can, they can be a bit hard to verify because we have to rely a lot on Jewish tradition, okay? So I take off a pinch of salt, but I don't exactly see anything wrong with this one. Kana Wedding Place, where Jesus performed his first miracle. Hmm. Okay, that one's a bit more difficult, the wedding of Kana. This looks like a small, it looks like a small old building in history, there's like a little chapel and everything there. But I doubt whether or not that's a real one. As far as I can see, there's the church, the, the church dedicated to this, okay? The church dedicated to the, the actual church. The big church. Well, it's a lot bigger. It definitely that looks nothing like this one. Also, I I just went into an archaeology look to um to try and see if I could find where this uh, where this actually happened. And it turns out that they did. They, they think they found a location. Um. They say that the actual wedding feast of Kana took place in a um. In a Jewish village called Kirbit Wana, which existed between 323 BC and 324 AD. So. Okay, that's quite cool timing. And it says that they found evidence of a vast network of underground tunnels used for Christian worship, whereas three searches have found crosses and references of Kyrie Iesu, a Greek phrase meaning Lord Jesus. The experts have discovered an altar as well as a shelf containing the remains of a stone vessel. Archaeologists also recovered six stone jars which are similar to the jars described in the biblical account of the miracle. We have uncovered a large Christian veneration cave complex that was used by Christian pilgrims who came to venerate the water to one miracle. This complex was used beginning in the late 5th or 6th, early 6th century and continued to be used by pilgrims to into the 12th century crusader period. Well, we think we found... Yeah, so we think we, think we actually found a location where this happened, um, where the wine, where the water to wine miracle occurred, and it's definitely not that in that picture, okay? I put it, I put a big link to this article if you guys want to read it, but it's definitely not this location. Place where Jesus kept at the night before his crucifixion. So I just noticed a very strange comment. Uh, it says, "Don't worship Jesus. He's a man-made fiction by the early Europeans." King James version was manipulated. Jesus was made by whites to make the all race feel the white race super supreme. Which fair God would you? Would you uh, would tell you to obey and serve your masters for your reward is in heaven? At the same time, telling you all men are equal. I am a Christian, but I send my prayers to Him, calling to God. Stop! I've stopped putting through Jesus uh, Christ our Savior, since I knew better. Bless. <laughs> oh, poor guy. He uh, he's definitely very misled. Let's, let's pray for him. Hmm. I don't think you see anything wrong with this this one here. Um. It, it okay, it's definitely not. It's not a mosque, which I'm thankful for. So it's probably genuine. Uh. That looks credible enough to me. I mean, if any of these are wrong, and I do need to cover them again, I will in another video. At Mount Karma, where Elijah brought down fire from heaven. Well, on Mount Carmel there is a community, okay? That's where the Carmelites existed. And again, that's where I get... Sorry, that's the wrong one. That's where I get my scapula from, okay? This is this is the brown scapula of Mount Carmel. So, if they were, if the location of the of where Eli, of where the where Elijah brought down fire from heaven was preserved, uh, I would think this was quite accurate. Okay, I would I would have nothing wrong with this because that that kind of community that community has existed there for ages. Okay, and there's always been tradition and stuff prior to that. So this this is probably this is probably one of the few genuine genuine ones. The Star of David. Okay, well, cool Star of David. The place where Jesus prayed the night for his crucifixion. No. I mean, sure, maybe there's art that seems to hint about him worshipping there and everything, but no, that is not the location. That is not the location. The actual location in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he did pray, is in the, is in the Church of All Nations. Okay? And that is in on the Mount of Olives, yes. In what's left of the, it's next to the Garden of Gethsemane. 
and it's in, it says it's enshrined a section of bedrock where Jesus is believed with bedrock where Jesus is said to have prayed before his arrest. Now, what I, what I, what I, what is information here? Yeah, there's. Yeah, it's this 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 church that that's currently built now. I mean, it was it was finished in a, in 1924, but there are the remains of a there's remains of a lot of things before it, uh, such as there was a 12th century Crusader chapel abandoned in 13, uh, 1345. There, there were there was an earthquake that destroyed and so there's an earthquake in 746 AD that destroyed a fourth century uh, Byzantine basilica. So this one definitely has an older history than whatever location that is. But when you see this picture of where the bedrock is, he's believed to have prayed, you see that it's actually very flat in a sense. I mean, there's like a metal, a metal ring, like you know, around the location, looks like a metal fence, but it's like it's like designed like eagles and thorns and stuff in it. And I, I could imagine that because of the dips and stuff in the rock, I could I could very easily imagine him lying down with his arms resting his head on his arms, weeping like that on top of the slight rise. So I'd say that this one has a lot more credible history than whatever location that is. The Wallet Mara, as mentioned in Exodus 15, where the water, where the bitter waters got sweetened. I think I've heard of this one before, but I can't necessarily guarantee its authenticity for this one. Because again, you've got to be careful with some of these wells. Some of them are very old, yes, but don't necessarily trust them all. I mean, I think there's also one about um, the well of Jacob, where, which, Jacob, which Jacob dug, that Jesus met the Samaritan woman by. I think that one is credible, and this one might be too, but I can't be too certain about that. I'm going to go to my, to my, biblical, my biblical archaeology friends first. The Tomb of Jesus. No, stop it. This, no, this this is just a cave decorated, okay? That you can find caves like this all over the Middle East, or all over Jerusalem decorated like that. The Church of Holy Sepulchre is the genuine one. Again, who cares if the Romans if the Romans had custody of it for a while? Okay, after the church, after the location, the pure Christians are pilgrimaging there, the Romans filled it in and then built a temple of Venus over it. Then St. Constantine the Great came to power, and so does St. Helena, his mother, came to power. St. Helena came to the Middle East to excavate and stuff. She's the patron of archaeologists. She went, she, um, she uh, found the location of... Um, she found the location of all the stuff in the middle of the, like, the areas of the Passion. She found the stones, she found the true cross, and the, the, the two crosses. She found the, um, she found the, the, she found the sepulchre, she found the nails and everything associated with the cross, or with the, the Passion. Okay. The church and holy support, and then after that she built, she built there. They built, they built a church there, and a, and a cathedral. And since then, I mean, sure the the Muslims came along, but because Jesus is holy to them too, even though if, if even even though they don't consider him the son of God, they pretty much left it alone. But this is this is fake, okay? It's fake. Well, okay, the, the tomb itself maybe was used as a tomb at some point, but tomb of Jesus, not tomb of Jesus. The church holy support is a much more credible one. And just because the Catholics and the Orthodox have it, grow up, Protestants, grow up. Just because we have the historical proof that you lack doesn't mean that ours is wrong. The Church of Sepulchre is a better candidate. Even the, again, the biblical archaeologists I work with, but not, not that I work with, but the ones I know, they aren't even Christian. Sorry, they are Christian. They aren't even Catholic. Some of them are very anti Catholic, but they admit that the Church of Holy Sepulchre is the best candidate. That's why Jesus asked Peter three times, Do you love me? I mean, I can't see the Sea Galilee, near, Galilee nearby. I mean, maybe it's that's in the background. I don't know. I'll take a pinch of salt. This one, I can't really, I can't guarantee its authenticity again. I may do more research on some of these later on, but this, this, this looks fine for me. Okay, don't worry about that. The Bethesda pool, where Jesus healed a man who had been a paralytic for thirty-eight years. This looks genuine as well. I mean, it looks a bit run down, but again, this, this, this is probably one of the few accurate locations. I mean, to be fair, there's, there's not much of those original pools left. It's pretty run down and overgrown. But this, as far as I can tell, this one, this one's genuine as well. Okay. If again, if any of these are wrong, I'll come back a later date and correct it. Okay. But this, this seems, this seems accurate as well. Yes, the spam message. Are you already at home, my love? Sorry to interrupt you at this time. My name is God. Why do you not pay more attention to me? I have protected you since you were born, and I have blessed you. I want this message. In, I want this message the whole world before midnight. If you do this, I will correct two great mistakes in your life, and I will help you in something you are needing, and your next day will be very blessed. Then send this message to as many people. And this is one of the reasons why I don't really take any of these uh, posts very credibly, because this is a load of cranko. Okay, God would not ask you to do something like this. Okay, this this is resorting him to some to almost like a virus, like a computer virus, saying just send me to as many people as possible. No, that's very different from evangelizing. Okay, evangelizing is something proper. This is this is rubbish. This is diluting the faith. Okay, 
something I really hate in the in a lot of the groups that I deal with is um there's all these spam posts going around. I'm very, very firm against spam posts, okay? Like in the group before I left it, when I we were the one that was banned to run by myself, I would remove hundreds of, of chain posts a week. Like it dilutes the faith and I hate it. I really hate it. And you know, I mean I make a video just just cursing uh, spam posts at some point at some point in the future. But this is this is one reason why I don't take them very credibly. If, they, if there's something about please send this to as many people as possible, don't necessarily trust the content of that post. And in this case, yep, look at that, that's the last picture. But in this case, these posts are fake, okay? These images, most of them are fake. Don't trust them. Actually look actually do a histor actually do um research into the historicity of these sites and stuff. Regardless whether you're Protestant or what or whatever, okay. If the Catholics have a credible site, just admit it's credible, even if you even if you don't like them having possession of it, okay? Regardless of who has the historical sites, it's still important history. And the fact that people would try and mislead people by putting in like the fake fake locations of where they put Jesus' body and where the, and where they think the sepulchre was, just because the church has the better candidate for it, but they refuse to accept it, that's quite malicious. Again, this this is evil. I'm just yeah, someone's liking one of my one of my responses to this post because I just respond to one of these things saying, "No, stop using these wrong images," and I corrected them. And now someone's liking my comments. I'm just going to uh, just save all the pictures right now as I'm talking, just so, so I can put it in the in the video that you guys are watching. But the point is, you need to actually put a look into the credibility of these locations when people talk about them. Me, if I ever go to the Middle East, I can tell you I would be researching non like nonstop for a week, trying to find all the locations to go and visit and stuff. Because I would absolutely love to go to these locations. Um. Maybe I can meet one of my, my biblical archaeology friends there. <laughs> that will probably be a bit strange, you know, meeting friends on Facebook in real life. But the point is, actually do research when you look at these locations. Because it's very easy to claim a fake location and pass it off as genuine when it is not. Okay, and it's it's malicious and it's spread and it leads people astray because again, regardless. Yeah, that person doesn't like this as Mount Sinai either. Okay, regardless of whether the Catholic, regardless of whether the Catholics have what would be considered the oldest historical proposed location, it doesn't mean that you should reject it because it's Catholic. Okay, that is being strong, strongly biased. Okay, I'll admit right now that unfortunately the Muslims do have possession of the Temple Mount. Like they can do almost whatever they want in it, and you can't really do anything. Like I was watching a video in which some guy said that he went to Israel, he went to Jerusalem with his friends for um, during one of, the holy, one of the holy days, and they were trying to pray. One of them was trying to pray there, and the temple, the people, police of the Temple Mount, uh, escort their fort, dragged them out because the Muslims are using it at that point in time. So it's obviously a bit irritating that they have possession of the Temple Mount. They can do pretty much whatever they want with it, and other people and Jews and Christians can't really go there and worship, which is a shame. But Regardless of which, that doesn't mean that that's we can't, we're not going to claim that that's not the Temple Mount because the Muslims have it. No, it's this other location. No, okay, we follow history wherever it goes, and just because the Muslims have the possession of Temple Mount now does not mean that it's no longer the Temple Mount for us right now. Right now, okay, it is regardless. And if Protestants are upset that the Christians have the possession of the true locations of these of these sites, oh well, okay, history is history, regardless of who possesses it, who possesses the books or the sites or runs them. Anyway, that's it pretty much for this video. There's my rant over about the um, about people using the wrong images for the biblical sites. But yeah, so I can I can do it. I can do a cover a lot. Me, I can cover some of these more in history if you guys want. Because trust me, the archaeology in the Middle East is beautiful. It's beautiful, and I would love to go through that one day, do that place, those spaces one day, and explore it myself. Yes, to hoping for that one day, and then maybe I can do like a vlog and everything about that. I would love. I would make so many vlogs from that trip. I really would. But that'll be for then. So yeah, that's it pretty much for this video. If you like this video, please do give a like. Please do share my videos. Please do comment on what you think of them and any other video you want to. Please do subscribe to my channel so you can see more of this content. And please ring the bell so you keep updated my video releases. Next episode, I'll read another archaeology video. That'd be quite nice. I like doing archaeology. As I told you before, I've been interested in archaeology ever since Indiana Jones. And marrying that to the Bible, brilliant. But that'll be for those videos. So God bless you all. See you next video, comrades. Until then.